Summer loving, had me a blast. Summer loving happened so fast. I found a book perfect for me. It's a summer loving book tag, guys. So let's get going, shall we? Guys, Tip with a Little Dose of Magic here. We're back with another video for you. And today, like I said, we are doing the Summer Loving Book Tag. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Sip. This is a Little Dose of Magic. On this channel, we're mainly Disney. But we throw in some other content, some Harry Potter, some bookish things, some art content. We just like to have fun. If you're returning, welcome back, friends. So this tag was created by Heather over at Bookables, and I was tagged by Nina over at Wrestling With Books and Wrestling With Disney. If you've not been following Nina's channel, Wrestling With Books, go check it out. She's doing Bookmas in July. It's awesome. It's been fun. But like I said, she tagged me in this, so let's just get going, shall we? Number one is Sand In Your Toes, a book that's perfect to read on the beach. I've got my iPad here that has all the questions. So, in case I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. All right, for this one, I gotta go with Daughter of the Pirate King. This book was so good. It's by Trisha Levenseller. Sent on a mission to retrieve an ancient hidden map, the key to a legendary treasure trove, 17-year-old pirate Captain Alosa deliberately allows herself to be captured by her enemies, giving her the perfect opportunity to search their ship. More than a match for the ruthless pirate crew, Elosa has only one thing standing between her and the map, her captor, the unexpectedly clever and unfairly attractive first mate, Raiden. But not to worry, for Elosa has a few tricks up her sleeve, and no lone pirate can stop the daughter of the Pirate King. This book was such a fun, quick read that I definitely recommend taking this to the beach with you. I think that setting would just make it that much better. All right, number two, Summer Thunderstorm, a book that truly spooked you. Okay, I don't really read horror. Not that I get scared, it's just not my thing. I like suspense. And you can ask anybody. It's hard. Like, spooking me or scaring me is hard. Now, this one, I chose The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. And I chose this one because in every mystery I read, I usually guess who it is or have a pretty good idea of it being between one or two people. You know? And... But this one, I did not see coming. So, I, the, and the way it all played out, I, I want to say it was just more like this could actually happen. And, I mean, I love this book. I definitely need to give this one a reread to see if it has the same, to see if I catch anything. I mean, now that I know who it is. It probably won't be as fun, but I want to read it again to see if I can keep up with it. And it was definitely, definitely shocked me more so than spooked me. But, all right. Every day, the same. Rachel takes the same commuter train every morning and night. Every day, she rattles down the track, flashes past a stretch of cozy suburban homes, and stops at the signal that allows her to daily watch the same couple breakfasting on their deck. She looks forward to it. She's even started to feel like she knows them. Jess and, Dick and Jason, she calls them. Their life as she sees it is perfect. Not unlike the life she recently lost. Until today. And then she sees something shocking. It's only a minute until the train moves on, but it's enough. Now everything's changed and able to keep it to herself, Rachel goes to the police. But is she really as unreliable as they say? Soon, she's deeply entangled, not only in the investigation, but in the lives of everyone involved. Has she done more harm than good? Seriously, this is the only book that I can remember that I have not guessed the whodunit. Alright, number three. Heating Up, a book that was seriously steamy. That would be this one. 
Love at First Fight by Anna E. Collins. This book was so good. It <laughs> it's about a spite house. She's trying to build this house to get back in the next. Need I say more? Falling in love is the ultimate payback. They say living well is the best revenge, but sometimes spreading the misery seems a whole lot more satisfying. That's interior designer Danny Porter's justification for buying the vacant lot next to her ex fiance's house. The house they were supposed to live in together before he cheated on her with their realtor. Danny plans to build a vacation rental that will A, mess with his view and peace of mind, and B, prove that Danny is not someone to be stepped on. Welcome to Project Spite House. The plan quickly becomes complicated when Danny is forced to team up with Wyatt Montego, the handsome, haughty architect at her firm, the only person available to draw up blueprints. Wyatt is the kind of man who eats a sandwich with a knife and fork, but as they spend time together, Danny glimpses something deeper beneath his hard ven veneer. And the closer she gets to her goal, the more she wonders if winning revenge could mean losing something infinitely sweeter. Like I said, this book, if you like romance or rom-coms, there's some, there's some awesome characters in this book too. And there's dog. Check this one out. Right, number four, Rained Out. A book that you were anticipating but were let down immensely. I don't even own a copy of this book. I hated it this book with a fiery passion that is we all looked up by tommy wallach i'll put it up here i i know people liked it and i understand why i just did not like the the ending and a few other things about the book i when i bought it it was something that sounded ex like exactly like something i would love and it right up my alley when I read it, I like I said, I immediately took it back to Half Price Books and traded it in <laughs> and got some money on it a little bit. Yeah, I try it. I'm not saying not to try it. You might like it. It just it was not for me at all. <laughs> Number five, they came mode. All right, so I don't own a copy of this book either. I have this one that's by the same author, um, Love and Luck. But Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch, and I'll put a picture. Lena, um, it's not exactly a big, uh, I guess it kind of is. Um, she goes to Ireland to visit her father because that's where he lives. It's been a while since I've read it, and I can't remember all the, the reasons that she decided to go ahead and go. Um, but she's not really expecting to like it there, I don't think. Um, but when she gets there, you know, she ends up learning a whole lot more about her dad and it explores Ireland and there's a boy, Ren, involved. And it's it's a cute book. It's a cute book. And I loved getting to read about different parts of Ireland and some of the things that she gets into there. It, that was a good book. All right, number six, Road Trip, a book that's all about a road trip. I have not read this one yet. But it's Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. I love Morgan Matson. This is one of the, like, this might be the only one of hers that I haven't read. There might be one more. Amy Curry is having a terrible year. Her mother has decided to move across the country and needs Amy to get their car from California to Connecticut. There's just one small problem. Since her dad died this past spring, Amy hadn't been able to get behind the wheel. Enter Roger, the 19-year-old son of the, an old family friend who turns out to be unexpectedly cute and dealing with some baggage of his own. Meeting new people and coming to terms with her father's death were not what Amy had planned on this trip. And traveling the loneliest road in America, seeing the Colorado mountains, crossing the Kansas plains, and visiting diners, dingy motels, and Graceland, we're definitely not on the itinerary, but as they drive, Amy finds that the people you least expected are the ones you may need the most, and that sometimes you have to get lost in order to find your way home. They like said, I, I haven't read this one yet. Everybody that has, that I know of, loves it, and I absolutely love Morgan Matson. So we're actually 
when you're seeing this, we're leaving today. No, not today. When you see this, we're already on our way up to Montana to visit a friend. So this one is definitely coming with me to read. I figured it was a great road trip read. So I'm excited to check this one out. Number seven, Amusement Park. A book that felt like a roller coaster. All right. This book, <laughs> Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo, the whole series. It's not so much of a roller coaster as far as the plot, but man, is it a roller coaster as far as emotions go. Let me read, let me read this first and then I'll talk about it. Alina Starkov doesn't expect much from life. Orphaned by the border wars, the only thing she could rely on was her best friend and fellow refugee, Mal. And lately, not even that seems certain. Drafted into the army of their war-torn homeland, they're sent on a dangerous mission into the fold, a swath of unnatural darkness crawling with monsters who feast on human flesh. When their convoy is attacked, all seems lost until Alina reveals a dormant power that not even she knew existed. Ripped from everything she knows, she is whisked away to the royal court to be trained as a member of the Grisha, the magical elite led by the mysterious Darkling. He believes that she is the answer the people have been waiting for, the one person with the power to destroy the fold. Swept up in a world of luxury and illusion, envied as the Darkling's favorite, Alina struggles to fit into her new life without Mal by her side. But as the threat to the kingdom mounts, Alina uncovers a secret that sets her on a collision course with the most powerful forces in the kingdom. Now only her past can save her, and only she can save the future. And guys, I this is seriously one of my favorite series, aside from Harry Potter and the Lunar Chronicles. I joke and tell people that Alina Starkov is me in book form. There's one line in particular. Are you, are you that funny? I'm hilarious. But this book definitely toiled with my emotions because did I want her to be with Mal? Did I want her to be with the Darkling? Did I want her to be with someone else that comes into the book? I, I could not decide. Ultimately, I knew who I wanted her to end up with. And she ended up with that person. But, I mean, there were things in this book that made me question that about every one of them. Number eight. Ice Cream, a book that was deliciously sweet. Ah, that, I read several that are pretty sweet, but I remember really thinking that this one was super sweet when I read it. The Unexpected Everything, again, Morgan Matson. Can we tell who one of my favorite contemporary or rom-com authors is? Andy had it all planned out. When you're a politician's daughter, who's pretty much raised yourself, you learn everything can be planned or spun or both especially your future important internship check amazing friends check guys check as long as we're talking no more than three weeks but that was before the scandal before having to be in the same house with her dad before walking an insane number of dogs and that was poor clark in those few months that might change her whole life because here's the thing if everything's planned out you can never find the unexpected and where's the fun in that? So, Andy was going to go to this prestigious internship for to try to get into medical school. Didn't happen. And there are cute dogs involved. There's a cute author involved. It's, it's a great book. I absolutely love this one. Number nine, Sunrise or Sunsets. A book that has Sunrise or Sunset on the cover or similar colors. That would be this guy right here. What Happened to Goodbye by Sarah Dessen. And actually, this is one of hers that I haven't read yet either. I've read like three or four of hers and I really like her as an author. Um, Morgan Madsen just kind of tops that out a little bit. But this is one that I definitely want to try to get to this summer too. A new day, a new place, a new life. In the past few years, McLean has pretended to be so many different people that she hardly remembers who she really is anymore. The adorable guy next door might be able to help her figure it out, but is she ready for it? This one is an older book. It came out in 
I think it said 2011. That's one of the hers that I haven't gotten to yet that I wanted to read, but it matched the prompt. Because surprisingly, none of the other books that I have, or that I've read, that I can remember, or that I, that, I, that I can think of, have Sunrise or Sunset on the cover. So, there you go. And then, number 10, last, but definitely not least, Long Days. The longest book you've read this year. I have been slacking. I haven't gotten to read near as much this year as I wanted to. But, that would be this guy right here. How to Love Your Neighbor. And, this one, <laughs> and I loved this freaking book. Interior Design School, check. Cute House to Fix Up, also check. Grumpy, sexy neighbor who is going to get in the way of all your plans, check unfortunately. Grace Travis definitely has it all figured out. Okay, not really, but in between finishing school and working nine million odd jobs, she'll get her degree and her dream job. Most importantly, she'll have a place to belong. When an opportunity arises to fix up and live in a little house on the beach as her final design project, Grace is all in until her biggest roadblock moves in next door. Noah Jansen knows how to make a deal. As a real estate developer, he knows he's found something special. Something he can even call home. Provided he can expand by taking over the house next door. The house with a combative and beautiful woman living in it. With the rules for being neighborly out the window, Grace and Noah are in an all-out feud. But sometimes your nemesis can show you that home is always where the heart is. This book, I love this book. There's banter, there's food, there's interior design and art, there's painting, a painting date. Need I say more? All right, who am I gonna tag? I cannot remember who everybody was gonna tag over in our chat, so I don't wanna double tag people. Um, let's tag Nicole over at Irresistible Magic, and then just anybody, if you wanna do this tag, consider yourself tagged, my friends. But all right, that is going to do it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this and get a little peek into some of the books that I, I love. And we will see you real soon. Remember, you're awesome just the way you are. We love you. Goodbye.